I realized I have quite a few 2020 videos that I never got uploaded, so I'm just going to group them all together in this video. It's kind of a hodgepodge, but you'll get the idea. Here we have the Orange Dream Yellow Belly Vanilla Het Pied Male breeding one of the pied females. She's got a really nice pattern on her. And just imagine that as a pied orange dream yellow belly vanilla. Can't wait for that one. Here is a fire double het for VPI Exanthic and Genetic Stripe breeding the same thing another fire double het for Exanthic and Genetic Stripe and you'll see some white markings right here on the male um, and I use this pin it's a sharpie mean streak and it's just white I'll show you here and I use that to mark my males when I'm going to breed two animals that look very similar to each other in this case they're both fires and it'd be hard to tell one from the other uh, I quickly want to be able to identify the male and not have to um, pop them each time um, this works out great so you know anytime you're breeding double hats like this or uh, anything that's similar um, really good to use uh, but this again is fires double hat for VPI Xanthic and stripe um, locked up there see the tails curled Here we have a Mystic Potion male, which you see on top, breeding a Super Mojave female. Come over and get a look at her head there. So this will make more Super Mojaves and more Mystic Potions. And here we have the Candino male. Breeding an albino female. They're all twisted up in there and they still got a shed, which always helps. If your females are shedding during breeding time, leave it in there with the male. I find it's a great aid. And here's another pair locked up. Zoom in here. There you can go. You can see their tails. And this white marking again that I put on there to indicate the male when I've got a pair that are very similar and I don't want to keep popping the, the boy all the time. This is an exciting pair of double hats for me that I'm really excited to see breeding and I'm not going to reveal yet what they are. Alright, here we're looking at a pastel lesser clown breeding an exanthic female. Uh, VPI line Exanthic. So if this is successful and they produce eggs and babies for me, we'll have uh, double het Exanthic clowns that are also uh, possibly I'll have some pastels and some lessers and they would be double het as well. Very excited for this. And here's a golden eye blood breeding a matrix female. All scrunched up in these dubs I need to get a bigger rack but this is working for now very happy to see this pairing coming to fruition again zoom over there there we go that's what we're hoping for and this is my first lockup with the Mojave or excuse me mahogany pied and he's breeding a banana pied female I'm especially excited to see this one because I've been hoping all season for him to get going. Here we have a scaleless head Mojave male breeding a scaleless head female. Here's some more lockups. This is an exanthic leopard male breeding an exanthic fire female. And you can see here's a big portion of her shed. Uh, whenever I see um, a nice complete shed and it's all usually rolled up in a little ring. I like to unroll it and lay it out there. I think it might be full of pheromones from the female and it seems to sometimes stimulate um, breeding activity. So I like to leave that in. 
and we can see here it's definitely working or they were just going to do it anyways but I think every little trick you can come up with helps and here's an Xanthic fire male het for pied breeding a pied female so that'll get us some double hets and some pieds that are head Xanthic And this one is Xanthic Fire Male, breeding a pinstripe head Xanthic female. He's probably my best patterned male. Nice lock up there. Some urates in the back we gotta clean out. This one is a banana pied, breeding a het pied female. See, there's a huge size difference, but that makes no difference whatsoever. And again, here's a shed that I unraveled from the female and left in there to try to stimulate things. You can never make enough banana pies and bananas hat pies, so uh, he's got his work cut out for him this year. Okay, now she's done laying her clutch. So let's get her back on ground level and we'll see what we've got in there. And it appears we've got seven eggs there. I'll take her off here. Can't really do it with one hand, so I'll come back in a moment. They've just been laid. You can very easily pull them apart. You can't leave that one up on top here because the lid will be on there and potentially could be touching the surface of the egg. And if that happens, we're going to get a lot of condensation. So I'll take that one off. Put these little plastic cocktail straws in. I'm missing the other one, but that will hold the egg in place. And there we go three, four, five, six, seven eggs. Again, this is from the Orange Dream Yellow Belly Vanilla Het Pied Male, bred to a Het Pied Female. There's a female working on laying some eggs for us this morning. This is a Het Pied Female, bred by the Orange Dream Yellow Belly Vanilla Het for Pied. So these all have some great potential. Looks like she's only got two out, so we're going to let her be for a little bit and see what the remainder of this clutch holds. Alright, and here we have a piebald female. This is pied number two in our collection, and she was bred by the Orange Dream Fire Yellow Belly Het for Pied. So I have high hopes for these eggs. Uh, let's get her unwrapped and see what we've got in there. So only three eggs and a slug. These are really, really big eggs, especially from such a small female. I think I've said it before, I would always prefer to have smaller eggs in a larger quantity to increase odds over having such large eggs. But, you know, if we hatch out uh, piebald orange dream yellow belly vanillas, then having such big eggs will be a bonus because they'll sell faster or um, grow up quicker. I'm so happy to have these. We got mom over here relaxing while I take these away. And we'll see if we've got room in here. Yeah, I'm going to have to take this one down. The eggs are laid overnight. You get to them in the morning, they're very easy to pull apart and separate so the lid can go on. And there we go. We'll get these in the incubator. These would be due to hatch in 60 days on my birthday. So that's exciting. All right, I was getting ready for a show this morning and came up to check on some females to see if they were paired. And we've got a couple locks here I'm going to show you. 
This is an Exanthic Dragonfly. So this is Exanthic Fire Pastel Pinstripe. Excuse me, bred to an Exanthic Spider. Locked up nice for me. And I've already checked these, so I know which ones are locked up and which ones aren't. And then over here, we've got a banana pied locked up with a really, really large hat pied female. And make some nice babies. Down here, I've got the world's first, and as far as I know, still the only Exanthic Fire Genetic Stripe. And he's locked up with a double het female, who's actually his mother. He's looking really good right there. And over here, we've got a Mystic Potion. Breeding a Super Mojave. Well, they were a little bit earlier. Let me see here. If they're still locked up, it's under her tail there. So they might not have, they may have stopped. Totally sure. Got a pair of double hets over here. Locked up, we can still see them. Right there, so that's a good lock. These are double het for Monarch and Genetic Stripe. I'm always happy to see them paired. And then here we've got my first Matrix female being bred by Goldeneye. So I'm really happy to see that. He's got some great coloration. Actually, she does too. She's really pretty. She's really dark. You can see here, very, very nice coloration. Can't pull this all the way out of the shelf. I'll drop it. I want you to see their heads there. Very happy to see that. This be my first year going for 007s. And down here, the double head dreamsicles, never mind, they weren't locked up. Down here, I've got an ivory male with another Matrix female. A little bit of stuck shed right there, but probably shouldn't disturb them. Here they are locked up. He's got his tail under hers. Let's see if we can see all of her. She's really pretty. They're definitely taking up this entire tub. I need to get some bigger racks for my bloods. And over here we've got a couple more. Got a pair of double head Exanthic clowns, which are no longer connected. That's a disappointment, but at least they were locked up this morning. And I've got Scaleless Head Mojave, and they're no longer locked up either. Well, this is Scaleless Head Mojave to Scaleless Head Mojave, and they were connected this morning when I first checked on them. And that's it. But as you can see, going back just the way I record stuff, we'll focus on these two since they're together. Um, I just put a little sticker in the corner with who the male is and the date that I see a lockup. And then off to the right here, I'll record follicle development. These happen to say that they laid last year. Um, I like to keep track of that. So if I'm not seeing any activity, I'll be able to chalk it up to, well, maybe she hasn't recovered enough from the previous year. Uh, but that's it for now.